In this question, we are asked to identify the independent and dependent variables. Dependent variable. It is the phenomenon you are studying. Independent variable. It is the factor that affects the phenomenon. A research team studied 49 individuals with acne symptoms and 52 individuals without acne symptoms. So the phenomenon they are studying is acne symptoms, making acne symptoms our dependent variable. The researchers found that some combinations of bacterial strains were highly likely to be found in cleared skin individuals, while other combinations were highly likely to be found in individuals with acne. So the factor that affects the phenomenon is the bacterial strains. Making our independent variable combinations of bacteria and our dependent variable acne symptoms. Another way to find the independent and dependent variables when given a graph is by drawing the x and y axes of a graph, like so. Then. On the axis, you draw the letter D, as in dependent variable. And on the Y axis, you draw the letter I, as in independent variable. So on the graph, our X axis is the boiling point, which is the dependent variable. And on the Y axis, it is pressure, which is the independent variable. In this question, we are asked what change would remove the error in the experiment. Reading the passage, a cosmetic company is testing a new acne cream. 600 patients with acne were randomly assigned into three groups, each receiving different doses. In any experiment where you are giving different doses of a medication or drug, you must have a control group. The control group doesn't receive any treatment. So for this experiment, we need a fourth group here that receives no treatment. Because the only way to check if the cream was effective is by comparing it to the group that didn't receive any treatment. So the answer to this question is C. In this question, we are asked what is the mean number of eggs laid by the hen from 2020 to 2024. Mean is also the same as average. So to find the mean, you have to get the sum of the values by adding all the eggs laid each year by the hen divided by the total number of values, which in this case is the total number of years. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, and that's the total number of our values, five. Now, we can plug this equation into our calculator. First, we click this one, and then go through the number of values, 337 plus 344 plus 256 plus 321 plus 357. Then you click down and put 5. Enter. And our answer is 323. Three, making our answer option B. In this question, we are asked, what is the median? The median is the number in the middle. Now, to get the median, or the number in the middle, we first have to arrange the numbers in ascending order, which is smallest to largest. So, we take the number of eggs in every year and arrange them smallest to largest, which goes 256, 321, 337, 344, 357, going for the smallest to the largest. Then 
we cancel out the 2 on the outside, then the next 2 on the outside, and then we remain with 337 as the median. The answer is A. In this question, it is asked, what is the mode? The mode is the most common number. To get the mode, we need to first arrange them from smallest to largest, which is in ascending order. So we take all the ages of the boys and arrange them. The number that repeats the most is the mode. And that is 13, making our mode 13 and our answer B. In this question, we are asked, what is the range? The range is the largest value subtracted by the smallest value. And the largest value in our table is 16. And the smallest value is 12. And if we subtract 12 from 16, we get 4. Making our answer C. In a genetics question, you want to find out about the parents first. In this question, the parents are both heterozygous, which means the traits of the parents is that they have one capital letter and one lowercase letter. For this question, you want to make a punet square by first drawing a box with four sections. Then you put the traits of the parents on either side. Let's do that right now. Now you simply combine them to see what traits their offspring will have. So capital R plus capital R is going to be two capital R's. Then capital R and lowercase r. Then again capital R lowercase r. And finally two lowercase r's. And the question is what is the chance they will produce offspring with white petals. The trait for white petals is lowercase r. And because capital R is dominant, to get white petaled offspring, we must have two lowercase r's, which makes it one out of four, which also equates to 25%, making our answer option A. In this question, we are asked to find the carrying capacity. And in any question you are asked to find the carrying capacity, it is where the graph levels out and the population line is horizontal. So in this case, our answer is D because here the line is horizontal, it's level. Making our answer option D. In this question, we are given a chemical reaction and we are asked which of the following chemical formulas represents the reaction. In this question, since we are combining the elements, our formula must be balanced, which simply means what we add should equal our sum. Looking at the answers provided, we can eliminate A because the product copper 2 oxide is on the left side of the formula, making it wrong. Now, to determine which of the following remaining is the correct answer, we must find the equation that is balanced. Going down, option B is also wrong because on the left side of the formula, you have copper, Cu, which is one atom of copper, plus O2, which is two atoms of oxygen equaling copper 2 oxide, which is two atoms of copper and two atoms of oxygen. For the equation to be balanced, we must have the same number of atoms on both sides of the formula. On the right side, we have 2 plus 2, which is 4 atoms, and on the left side, we have 2 plus 1, which is 3 atoms. If we correct the number of atoms, it should read 2 
atoms of copper plus two atoms of oxygen equals two atoms of copper and two atoms of oxygen. Making the correct answer, option C.